Cesar de Pavesa says this, traveling is brutal. It forces you to trust strangers and to leave those comforts of family and friends behind you. Traveling, I'm always off balance. He says, nothing is yours except the essential things, air, sleep, the sky, the sea, and dreams, which all tend towards the eternal, or how one perceives that to be. He's right, traveling is brutal. And uh, who will help me in my travel? I don't ex expect people to help me, but wow, am I so grateful for those who have reached out to assist me. There are seven routes one can take when traveling the Camino de Santiago. I'm sure it's a tremendous pilgrimage to do any one of those routes. But there's a law, unwritten law of uh, Camino de Santiago that says, Camino will take care of you. And when we journey, we need people along our way. It gets brutal. You're alone, facing dangers, tired, exhausted, and you need people just to connect with, just to show you the way to discuss where you're going, what you're doing. And um, I've been so grateful to meet such a widespread group of fantastic people. And in this episode, we're just gonna to talk to see two of them, which really, really assisted me during the last week or so. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled, I'm blessed, or you can say fortunate, but wow, without, <laughs> without some of these people, um, life would have been extremely difficult. Why do people help me? Altruism is a behavior of helping others. What's the takeaway or what's the reward when helping others? I think that uh, there's lots of rewards, but I think helping others is just part of being human, that we belong to each other. We're knitted socially, personally, to each other. Helping others is a fantastic thing. Something called reciprocal altruism, which kind of goes along the line of, you know, what you cast on the water, it's gonna come back to you. And in helping others, we realize that somewhere along the road, whether it's the Greater Loop or the Camino de Santiago, people are gonna reach out and they're gonna help just because they want to do it. No other reason than they just want to do it. It feels good to help others. It feels good when people help me. I'm so thankful. I'm so eternally thankful for everybody who's helped me along my route. And this movie is gonna just show two of these people who really encouraged me to believe in what I'm doing, where I'm going, and also to continue my journey of helping others along the way. Wow. What an experience. Okay. Now I've, uh, I'm in a, a small cabin on Kelsey Island. I loved you so 
I opened the window and came in and then opened the door. I don't know, could be breaking an entry, but uh, I'm not here to steal anything. I'm just here to have a warm sleep. So I'm a bit happy. No one's here, no one's on the island. I'll maybe leave them a note telling them that I was here. Maybe not. I slept great in the cabin. Um, looks like a nice day today. No clouds. The water's calm. I'm heading to a place called New London and uh, I'm ready to go. Today's the paddling day. I'm thankful that I quit when I quit yesterday. The wind picked up and just kept on picking up and if I'd went further, there's literally no place to come into land. There's stone banks and uh, stones everywhere. So today, good day. Don't like the feeling not being able to come into land if it starts blowing, but um, I think it should get better a bit further on. I never made it to New London, but I managed 51 kilometers regardless. Uh, I'm not too sure where I am, but um, I landed on the beach and I met Marion, 82 years of age, and she let me put my tent up on her grass. So that means that no problems with a private beach. Uh, now I'm just walking, hopefully to buy a pizza. I'm really hungry, but it's a long walk. <laughs> wow. I've came down there and uh, it's, it's really lush. It's really lush here. And I'm going boom, down there. Beautiful driveway, gorgeous. Alte Privater. English Basseri, I need a private way. So, if someone lures me on what I hold on me, then I'm going to just talk in Norsk. All that private. Crazy.
I know you were talking about buying me and Mike. He said that picture too. She's talking about us. Super cute. Super cute. We appreciate that. Skikkelig mørk i skiene. Skal sove i teltet. Håper det går bra. I made it to Rhode Island. Um, difficult paddling, difficult to come in with my kayak. I had to find a place with less waves. Interesting when I paddle out tomorrow. Last time I was on Sandy Hook, I capsized three times trying to get out due to the waves. Gotta practice that. All fun, I guess. I'm reminded you get by with the help of your friends. My entry into Rhode Island actually began with a fantastic meeting with a guy called Peter, who really just went out of his way to help me. I was low on provisions and I needed a place to eat. And I stopped at his uh, fish and tackle and bait store and I asked him about a restaurant. He says, well, you gotta go like a mile, you know, down the, the road. And he said, but, but you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm, opening a, <laughs> I'm opening a restaurant tomorrow. He says, and you know, I'm gonna make food and we're just, we're just gonna eat here. And uh, he says, I'll make you some food. So he went out of his way to get food for me and he's gonna make me a specialty steak sandwich and clams. And this was the first guy in Rhode Island that I met that reached out and said, I'm gonna make this a beautiful entry for you. Even though he didn't say it, but Peter and I really, oh, we had so many things in common. And he's got a great lady in sight called Leah, or Leah, and uh, wow. Wakapau is a beautiful place. Wikapaug, Wakapau. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but with two beautiful people there for sure. One, Peter, and the other, Leah. Uh, good luck, Peter. Thank you for being the first person in Rhode Island to reach out and to help me. I love you for that. Yes. <laughs> I'm taking okay. the I'm looking back. Peter, Peter, Peter's my man for the day. Now uh, here he is. Hand cut ribeye steak sandwiches. He cuts them himself. And then he fries up all the onions and peppers, and he does it. Just like home. Just like home. And then he's got clams that is also from a saltwater pool. I dug myself. That he's dug himself. Yeah. Beautiful 
for me, so. That's the wampum. So I have to install the water. Yeah. Indigenous people call them. Good, good clams, wow. <laughs> okay, Peter, you you live in Weekapauk? What is Weekapauk? What 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 place is this? So I live in Charlestown, Rhode Island, which is the next town over. This business is a, actually in Mesquamic if it's the Weekapog Breachway, which feeds the Winnipeg Pond. Yeah. And um, it's all part of a town called Westerly, which is okay. my hometown. Your hometown, yeah? yeah. So you've here a long time. You're a Rhode Island man. I, I, I've lived here, but I grew up in Houston, Texas, and in Park City, Utah. Yeah. Um, and then finished off, came back and finished off high school here, and my grandparents raised me. Okay, yeah. So. Um, What's the future hold? How many bacon taco shops do you want, or what? What's 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 your why? List? I don't. I don't really have a want for yeah. for any of. Them. I never even dreamed of having a bacon taco shop. Um, it's just something that I kind of fell into, and then ended up getting another one. And I just really, uh, I'm just in a path for happiness and uh, family, community, and love. And this is the path that was presented to me when I asked for all that. So I'm just going down it. Yeah. And it could all come and go, but it's all moving me towards what I'm looking for. Yeah. And I've got incredible people in my life that are like angels that have just showed up and given in ways that, you know, are amazing and help the dream yeah. Yeah. keep keep like flowing. And, <clears throat> and it's really, it's really been a, just a great ride. So you, we need people to reach out to us, don't we? We need to connect with people. You do. You got to put out. If you put out the right energy, you attract people that you can, that you'll be safe with, that yeah. you can trust, and you don't have to worry about people stealing from you or all this. Yeah. If you attract the right things, if you put the right stuff out, I really believe you get protected. Yeah. Uh, by that energy and the people that you surround yourself with, because they look out for you and they got your back. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got theirs and it's kind of all about making the round table where everyone has a say and yeah. no one works for anybody no one works for me i i i owe them they yeah. don't owe me yeah. Yeah. and uh and i just try to i've always tried to just uh, when you meet someone you just you give them their your best and you treat them like family and like friends and then you see where it lays after that but i i would never change that and uh so i'm hoping to build here and just um, you know, who knows? Maybe someday I'll be living on a beach in Panama in the winter time, and have this here, and have a little clam shack or a little yeah. bait and tackle there. But yeah, yeah. I just um, it's and about the people, like you were saying earlier. Um, you know, it's just it's just about meeting people. That's living. When you meet people and you meet strangers, or and you appreciate everyone, and you just like treat people the way you want to be treated. It's really amazing. It helps heal traumas that we've all been through. And um, if you can get people to open up, you can give them hope. Give me hope, and, and, uh, and, and then if they have hope, then it's one more person that yeah. has a little bit of hope and a little belief in magic and in, yeah. in the magic of life, and not like this system that's been yeah. that we think is what reality is. But the original reality is just really is just love and is understanding, yeah. and um, being there for each other. Yeah.
Never seen such a large house in all my life. Never. So hard, I love. So hard. Klokken er uh, <coughs> nå uh, fem om morgenen. Våknet uh, halv fem. Jeg kan ikke, klokken er egentlig halv seks. Uh, forlot uh, Little Compton, stranden, uh, fem. Nå har jeg krysset uh, grensen inn til uh, Massachusetts fra Rhode Island. Jeg skal padle uh, mot uh, Buzzard Bay, og så skal jeg um, møte en, en dame som heter B. Hun skal hjelpe mig til å portasje rundt Cape Cod Canal. Jeg fikk ikke lov å padle gjennom det, så hun skal uh, transportere mig rundt. Myndighetene sier at det er for mye strøm, og store skip, og mye trafikk, og ikke sted for en kajak. Så nå padler jeg mot uh, Buzzard Bay. Det var uh, mye bølger. Jeg er ganske sliten nå. Meget sliten. Jeg tror jeg tar en liten pause. Yes. Jeg er på en øy som heter West Island, og uh, vinden har uh, økt litt, men uh, jeg tror jeg er litt ute det verste. Jeg har uh, 20 kilometer igjen. Okay, I've just got a button here before we meet B, because this, this needs some explanation. When I began my trip, um, I first came into contact with B through a common friend whose name is Steve. And B's been uh, following me a long way. B's an avid kayaker and uh, married to a lovely man named Russ. But what I didn't know is that B is actually Norwegian and B is short for Beata, which is a, a nice, nice Norwegian name. This lady for, to me is just one of a kind. Um, gone miles, literally miles out of her way to help me and to assist me. So when she came to pick me up, 
She had a lunch with her and coffee. <laughs> Helped me put the kayak on the roof, put all my gear in, and we drove to her place and at a wonderful supper. And then I ended up staying with them at least for, I don't know, five or six days. Um, Cause then after a couple of days there, I started kayaking from the Cape Cod channel towards Boston. And I came halfway one day and then she came and picked me up and then she del delivered me the same place. And I completed up to Boston Wow, what a, uh, like I say, just one of a kind. Uh, a heart full of gratitude, appreciation of nature, appreciation of the outdoors. What a pleasant soul to spend time with. And uh, I just really, really appreciate Beata and her husband, Russ. Uh, a real oasis after a long period of paddling and uh, so let's let's meet the Keep shutting me out of so Ellis har, har kommit till att hämta mig och jag ska ha några dagar hos henne. Ja, okej. Okay. Och hon är helt norsk. Helt norsk. Helt norsk för för Larvik. Öl, beer. Oh. Prosciutto sandwich. Prosciutto. Spekeschinke. Spekeschinke. Kall. Brownies. Brownies. Homemade brownies. Or coffee. Okay. Yeah. Norsk picnic. That's the app. Yeah, the Beata, so my hair, my mai. Just to conquer her, my. Yeah. I never hear you say um, that you're wrong. Never hear you say. Nu kör jag med Beata. Och vi har kört den. Jag har hört att det är lovligt att se på telefonen och köra samtidigt. Ja, men jag gör inte men, men hon gör inte det? Nej, nej. Nej, 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 nej. nej. Men allt är lov i USA. Är det det? Är det inte det? <laughs> du, du vet, fräja choklad. Uh -huh. de, de säger att det uh, är en liten smak av Norge. Och då är det hos Beata. Det är en skicklig stor smak av Norge. Och, uh, Jag är en gäst hos henne. Nej. Jag är ett barn. Jag är ett barn. Jag är, el jag är älsket. Älsket. Detta, detta det är en av de goda dagarna. För igår var jag väldigt deprimerad. Ja. Faktiskt. Um, jag har paddat många dagar på rad. Ja. Och detta är nästan himmelsk. Ja. Nästan. Bak mig är Cape Cod kanal och den kunde jag lätt paddlet men nej fick inte lov men det är väldigt vackert och och den är how many miles tror du? Okay, syv eller åtta amerikanska mil och väldigt fint ställe då. Keep cutting it. There's no one who follows. Not even me. Not even me. Let's clarify.